Welcome to our channel, your go-to destination for daily news updates, keeping you informed on the latest happenings across the United States of America. President Joe Biden delivered a humorous jab at former President Donald Trump's mental fitness during the Gridiron Club dinner, a long-standing Washington tradition dating back to the 1880s. One candidate is too old and mentally unfit to be president. The other one is me, Biden quipped in front of over 650 guests, including Irish Tawaisish Leo Varadkar, Amazon's Jeff Bezos, and TikTok CEO Shu Zichu. In a light-hearted manner, Biden referenced Trump's claim of running against Barack Obama and joked about staying up past his bedtime at 81. Trump's campaign did not respond, but the 77-year-old Republican has previously questioned Biden's mental capacity. Biden has brushed off criticisms of his memory and clarity, maintaining his focus on presidential duties. Former President Donald Trump escalated his dehumanizing rhetoric against immigrants during a rally near Dayton, Ohio, stating that some accused of crimes are not people in his opinion. I don't know if you call them people, Trump said, adding, in some cases they're not people in my opinion, but I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. Trump, who was in Ohio to support Senate candidate Bernie Moreno, criticized the radical left for stifling such comments. Moreno, a businessman, is competing against Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose and State Sen. Matt Dolan for the Republican nomination to challenge Democratic Sen. Sherrod Brown, during his own remarks on immigration, Moreno emphasized the importance of foreigners learning English upon arriving in the United States. A man suspected of killing three family members in Falls Township, Pennsylvania, on Saturday morning has been apprehended after fleeing to Trenton, New Jersey, according to local authorities. Initially, officials believed the suspect was barricaded inside a Trenton home with hostages. They evacuated the residence through an upstairs window, assuming the suspect was still inside. However, after hours of surrounding the house and calling out to the suspect, Officers spotted him walking down a nearby street and arrested him without further incident. The city's police director stated that the suspect had left the house before authorities established a perimeter. The suspect, believed to be homeless, has family ties to the house in Trenton where he was found. Police in Falls Township noted they had minimal contact with the suspect in the past. Law enforcement officers captured a suspect in the shooting death of a New Mexico State Police officer on Sunday in the Albuquerque area, thanks to a tip from a gas station clerk. The Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office detained 33-year-old Jeremy Smith of Marion, South Carolina, in the southwestern part of Albuquerque after the clerk notified authorities. Smith was located walking on the outskirts of a residential area and was wounded by gunfire as officers pursued him on foot. He was taken to a local hospital for treatment under police guard. South Carolina authorities identified Smith as a person of interest in the killing of a local paramedic whose stolen car was involved in Friday's fatal shooting of New Mexico State Police Officer Justin Hare along Interstate 40 west of Tucumcari. No information about Smith's medical condition was provided. Kung Fu Panda 4 continues to reign supreme at the domestic box office, securing the top spot for the second consecutive weekend, with a $30 million haul. Its global earnings now stand at an impressive $176.5 million, according to Variety, following closely in second place is Dune, Part 2, which earned $29 million over the weekend, bringing its global total to $400 million. The highly anticipated sequel is on track to surpass its predecessor's performance later this week. In a distant third is Arthur the King, featuring Mark Wahlberg as an adventure racer, accompanied by a stray dog, in a race through the Dominican Republic. The film only managed to earn $7.5 million in its opening weekend, leaving one to ponder if Wahlberg's odds would have been better with the panda or sandworm as his companion. Prince William and Kate Middleton are preparing to release a photo to celebrate Prince Louis' sixth birthday next month. However, amidst a recent photo editing scandal, the royal couple is reportedly undecided on who should take the photograph.
They appreciate the public's love and affection for their children and know there is a public appetite to see them on their birthdays, a source told the Sunday Times over the weekend. Prince Louis' birthday falls on April 23, a Tuesday this year. Typically, the palace releases a new portrait of the young prince a few days before his birthday. Target has officially launched its new self-checkout process, Express Self-Checkout, in nearly 2,000 stores nationwide. Effective Sunday, customers can now bring a maximum of 10 items to the self-checkout machines. The company tested Express Self-Checkout in around 200 stores last year, finding that self-checkout times were approximately twice as fast compared to other stores without the feature. Additionally, customer surveys during the trial period indicated an overall improvement in the checkout experience. In addition to the new self-checkout option, Target has increased the number of traditional checkout lanes with cashiers available to accommodate customers with larger shopping carts. Rumors suggest that the PS5 Pro's enhanced graphics could set it apart as the top console choice for experiencing GTA 6 a recent leak hints at the release of the upgraded PS5 Pro later this year, potentially aligning with the holiday season. Should these rumors materialize and GTA 6 indeed launches in early 2025, as anticipated Sony could secure its position as the go-to platform for one of the most eagerly awaited games in recent memory. While this scenario hinges on several uncertainties, including the actual release dates of both the console and the game, the potential is significant. GTA 5's record-breaking success upon its 2013 release underscores the immense opportunity for Sony. Particularly noteworthy is Rockstar's departure from the trend of simultaneous PC and console launches. Instead, GTA 6 is slated for a staggered release, with an upgraded version for PC following the initial launch. Matt Noling's buzzer-beating jumper capped off an 8-1 run for Yale, leading them to a thrilling 62-61 victory over Brown in the Ivy League Tournament Championship game. This win marks Yale's seventh appearance in the NCAA tournament. In the final moments, Keno Lilly Jr. made two free throws, giving Brown a 60-54 lead with only 27 seconds left. However, Bezembang's three-point play and John Pulakaita's three-pointer quickly closed the gap. Nana Owusu and Amy's free throw extended Brown's lead to 61-60. But missed opportunities, including two missed free throws by Malachi Endur, set the stage for Nalling's game winner. This heartbreaking loss came after Brown's impressive six-game winning streak to end the season, securing the fourth and final spot in the conference tournament. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content.